Okay, where's the nutmeg? Hold on, hold on. Wait a second. There. <laughs> Woo! Uh, uh, nutmeg. It's never there when you need it. Let me tell you. Welcome, everyone, to the Nutmeg Tavern. We are live. And I see all sorts of folks here from um, New York and from Canada and from Connecticut and from the rainy UK and there's Maryland and there's somebody from Germany and Rochester and... Woo, uh, it's getting packed with all sorts of people here in the Nutmeg Tavern. So welcome, come in, find a seat uh, by the fire if you're cold, if you need a drink. Uh, well, somebody will serve you undoubtedly. Anyway, um, we are here and um, we are here to relax because it's Friday and it's late and we just are ready to go home and have a weekend. Um, Mexico, Wisconsin, snow, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <sighs> we had snow pellets this morning, like little, oh, I heard them, but I didn't see them. Yeah. They, they were, were gone by the time I went in. Some people live in the nutmeg tavern almost, <laughs> and they come down to work. They never even go outside. Right. Usually going out to the post office is the first time I step foot outside. Mm. And that's great when it's winter. That's cheating. <laughs> that's cheating. North Carolina, um, New Jersey. Um, sorry, and some people moving from one state to another. Recon Phil. Um, Louisiana. Uh, Yukon. Okay. From, is that Yukon? Uh, Brazil. Wow. Amazing. It is people from all around the world are crowding into the Nutmeg Tavern. So uh, even even Missouri and Idaho. Um, today we've got just a super interesting topic. And, um, you know, we, we think about how popular and different traveling around the world was in the 18th century. Today, if you're going from so let's say Europe and you want to come to the new world, to North America or any place over here, um, more than likely, or vice versa, more than likely the transport method will be via aeroplane. Okay, right. And that is not a very old invention. Uh, so everybody was traveling in the 18th century and 19th century via ship if they're going to do that kind of travel. There really was no other choice unless maybe you're going to swim. And we, it's hard for us to kind of wrap our brains around just how popular and how many people were being trans transported that way, or let's say goods and services, whatever. And the one of the weird things about it is, is that artwork done, you know, pictures, snapshots of life on board ship in the 18th century is actually very rare. When you look at pieces of art and you're trying to get an idea about visually what was going on there, you'll find lots and lots of images of ships from shore or maybe from another ship, but you really can't tell, but very few life, you know, as life was happening on board ship kind of images. So we do have some of those images today, amazing images uh, that we'll be going through and kind of getting a feel for that because it's such a rare thing. Um, so that's what we're going to be digging into today. I do want to thank, um, before we get any further though, all the folks that showed up at Kalamazoo, Michigan to shake hands and say hi and all that good stuff. So last live stream, I said, hey, tomorrow I'll be up at Kalamazoo, Michigan. A whole bunch of people uh, showed up and uh, they were excited because they didn't even know the event was going on or you know, maybe they'd forgotten it was gonna be that weekend. And I got to say hi and shake hands and hear stories and, and it was a tremendous time of reacting with all a bunch of people that watched the channel. And, and, and one of the interesting things is, is that um, if we look at the channel and we take all the normal videos and the people that watch them and then we have the subset of people that watch live streams and uh, what we got up at Kalamazoo was, a, in comparison, a lot of people talking about the live streams. And, and as a media team person, um, we kind of 
you know, it's like, ah, uh, the live streams are that, um, that, that uh, second cousin that's not very popular, you know? Um, but when it comes to talking to people at events, um, they're interested in what happening, what's happening in the live streams. And, and so uh, it kind of makes us realize just how important live streams are. So uh, thank you for being part of the live streams. And, and if you were up to Kalamazoo, um, thanks for coming by and saying hi. And if you didn't get a chance to say hi, but you were there and you were too scared, well, that's okay. Um, thanks for coming by anyway. And that reminds me of events. We do very, very few events in the year. Uh, so we go up to Kalamazoo, we go to Mrs. Cinewa, 1812 in um, Marion, Indiana at, in the fall. And then um, Ivy and I, not as, a, not as vendors, but just for fun, we usually show up at Martin Station. It's called, what's it called again, the event name? Virginia, America's First Frontier. Virginia, America's First Frontier. It's at Wilderness Road State Park. Um, it happens right around Mother's Day, usually about Mother's Day weekend, somewhere May 11th or something like that. So it's um, this May year. 10th through the 12th this uh, year. 10th through the 12th this year. So we'll be going there just to have fun. Uh, that's right at the Cumberland Gap area, so extreme western Virginia. Um, we'll be at that event to say hi to people who happen to, to come by. Um, while I'm here talking about events, I do want to mention uh, Reenactors Schedule. So it's a website where you can find events going on, historical reenactment events going on around the country. Um, and it's a really neat website. Lauren, can you drop a link yes. in the chat? Mm -hmm. uh, that's done by uh, Frank uh, Jarbo. And he's doing a great job kind of working on that. If you have a historical event and you want it listed at a kind of one of those, you know, clearing houses, you know, I would like to do a site like that, but hey, Frank's doing it. So um, I'm, I want to encourage that. So if you're interested in historical events, not ones that I'll necessarily be at, but neat historical events, make sure to check out that website. It's got this calendar of events and it gives you a map and it tells you what's going on and all that good stuff. So I really want to encourage that. And, um, and encourage people to look for historical reenactment events in your area and check them out. So there we go. Now on to fun ship images. And there is, um, there's Daniel Banks, a member for 43 months. <laughs> Thank you for your support. Um, so uh, what's this artist's name? Bray. Um, Bray was a second lieutenant of the palace. Was the palace a 44 gun? I thought it was a 36. I, I saw a couple different uh, things about it. I think it might have changed. Like they might, it might have started out as a particular type, and they might have added some some smaller deck guns or something mm -hmm. as it went along. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Uh, Bray was the second lieutenant on board the palace, and he did artwork uh, during the 1770s, uh, during a particular voyage, and uh, the notebook is available, and, and we have some of the, uh, the images from the palace, and the palace was a British frigate in this time period, and I, I think it started out as a 36 gun, um, and for the time period, that's a fairly large frigate, not, um, you know, a third rate 74 or something like that, like a really big ship, but those frigates that are kind of, they're, they're independent action kind of ships. So um, they would go around and, and do lots of fun stuff. If you really wanted to be on board a ship that was, say, in action and taking in, in single ship actions, one-on-one -on -one -on -one, or, you know, taking uh, ships, that are, you know, uh, commercial ships and, you know, and, and, and taking them as a prize, you want to be on board a frigate. And so we have uh, the, uh, the palace here, and we're going to look at some images from that. So punch us into that, Ivy, please. This is an image of the palace done by an artist from the outside. This isn't done by Bray, correct? Right. right, it's right. somebody. Uh, a different artist, but he's doing, so we get an idea of what the ship is like. So this is a ship that has basically a single um, deck of guns, so a single row of guns. We do have some little upper uh, deck guns on like the, um, 
uh, on the quarter deck. So you see some extra little ports there in the back. Uh, but it's a standard ship with three masts, and, and uh, um, it is probably got maybe 200 to 250 men on board, something like that. And this image is of it in three different places. So we can see it's basically the same ship in three different poses, like it was, uh, like it was a criminal and you're you know, taking <laughs> pictures of it so that you can um, kind of identify it. Right? <laughs> what? It's the ship's mugshot. Like, yeah, See, and this it's is the ship mugshot. Yeah, side. exactly. There you go. Um, and it is, uh, uh, you know, looks like it's in, in some nice weather here. We got some, you know, waves. It's not calm. Um, we're going to jump in and see what we got. So here is um, one of the Bray images. And ne neither of the ships we see here are uh, in the background here are are the palace. They're some smaller ships, probably you know like um, not quite frigates. So maybe sixth rates or something like that. Uh, Twenty gun ships, something a little bit smaller. And then this is probably one of the palace. It's um, ships boats here in the foreground here with sailors on board. And they've got a little sail up, so they don't have to be uh, rowing, and uh, they are uh, going someplace. Now we, I, I think it's you know so many times when a um, a frigate like this has to go someplace, they have to put down their boats and interact with other ships or uh, places where they can't you know come up to a a dock or a pier close. They have to get out the ship's boats, which is a real pain because they don't have davits in the back. They have to use ropes coming off of the, uh, uh, off of the yard arms to lower these boats down in. And then the sailors, you know, jump down inside the boat and off they go. Now, this is probably even one of the smaller ones. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Um, there's like seven to eight people, somebody might be hidden behind that, that rear sail, uh, on board this little boat. There's likely even a larger one that um, uh, the, the ship would have, and it would have up to three or possibly even four of these boats that they would have on deck or sometimes towing behind the ship, although we don't normally see that in a painting. Um, and that, that would be so they could do um, boarding other ships, maybe if they were attacked and, and they, they surrendered and then sailors would have to go across or they might even attack by the little boats or do all sorts of uh, different things with these boats. And they would be all different sizes so they could kind of fit one into the other. They could nest down inside of themselves so that you, they wouldn't, or else they'd take up the entire right, deck. Right, ships don't have a lot of room. Right, exactly. <laughs> But, and Excellent. they're one of those things that can be very dangerous too. If you have the, all those ships stacked up inside each other mm. on board, yeah. and, and then you're in a battle, a cannonball hits one of those mm. and they become a giant, like, grenade of, of yes, uh, slivers, splinters. right? Mm -hmm. Of all these splinters. And splinters were one of the things that really hurt people in a ship battle. So this cannonball would come through, I was like, oh, if a cannonball hits you, right, you're, just like, well, you're done, right? But a cannonball hits the side of the ship and it explodes into splinters. And that's what does so much damage to yeah. all these people. Um, so the ship's boats can be both a wonderful thing and then a very scary thing. So sometimes if you knew you were going to be a battle, you would actually string your boats out behind you or just pitch them overboard. Yeah, we'll pick them uh, up later. Right, exactly. It's like, well, we'll, we'll worry about that tomorrow. We'll go and fetch them later. Um, so yeah, ship's boats are one of those, you got to have them. If you don't have one, you're in, <laughs> you're in serious trouble. Um, but sometimes you don't, you don't want it. Now we've got an image here of uh, a, a marine and a sailor, and they're sitting up on one of the anchors. So this might be, there actually looks like he's got uh, like a little anchor and a big anchor. Uh, which side was this? Did it say that it was on? Let's see. Mm -hmm. They're sitting on, it says apparently they're sitting yeah. on the port anchor. Right. So another thing is happening is a ship that's this big, um, or any basically size ship, you don't have one anchor. You've got 
um, maybe five anchors, right? <laughs> and they're of varying sizes. And you would use them in different occasions for different things. So many times you would have two anchors out so that you could stretch uh, on one side of the ship and on the other side to hold the ship in one location. And there are other times when you are in, say, a river and the water is always flowing one direction and you could just put one anchor out and use the anchor or use the, the, uh, the flow of the water to hold you kind of downstream. Um, and you know, this, they're, they're, they're fishing off of this and the interpretation by at least somebody was that they were at single anchor someplace, probably in like one of those river settings or where the current always goes one direction. And they're sitting on the other anchor and, or actually two of the anchors and, uh, they're, they're just fishing off of this. Now, there are times it's like if someone's on duty they're not fishing but if someone is in a is in a sitting a setting where they're not actively sailing let's say they're at single anchor um there aren't a lot of things that sailors have to be doing especially if you're not on watch and so something like fishing is something you can't be doing now we talked about this so much people are like oh why are they so worried about salt provisions and having all this food when they could just fish. And yeah, there are times when sailors can just fish. Um, but that isn't often necessarily or for any per period of time. And if you've ever been a fisherman or just, you know, it's like occasionally I go fishing, you never know when you're going to come back with a lot of fish, rarely, or more likely, never. You know, no it's fish. Like, you no, come no, back no. with no fish. So you can't rely on fishing. But that doesn't mean they didn't have fun fishing. Now, you see, they don't really have poles. Um, they just have a line and whatever's on the end of that line. And sometimes they don't even have enough food to really kind of bait the line with anything. So they would bait the lines with things like pieces of red flannel or, or <laughs> you know, cut, cut the red flannel in the shape of a fish <laughs> and hope to catch stuff. And it would work. They would, they would be able to catch things. So we have sailors here uh, on the anchors fishing. And then one that is uh, using a gun that's run out as, uh, you know, hanging off that. Now, really good question, I think, is why would you have a cannon run out and someone fishing off of it? That's my question in this case, because it is right. You're like, is did did he like ask the, the ships seem too militaristic to just like say, could you run out? Yeah, just run this fish out. Yeah, I want to fish. You know, so normally <laughs> you'd probably be fishing off the main chains, which are these uh, sort of like little platforms that stick out from the side of the lower down on the ship, um, so that the the um, the shrouds kind of are extended out from the edge of the ship. And that is a natural platform and place for you to stay. Now, this seems like a kind of a precarious way to for go both, fishing. But for both right. ones. But maybe he, as an artist, he chose them because it was a dramatic shot. I well, truly, um, it is. A, they, they are interesting. And we can see the one where the cannon's sticking out, mm -hmm. the tumble home of the ship. So that's that, that's that, that, uh, angle that the ship doesn't it does it isn't straight up from the sides right it isn't mm -hmm. like a bathtub you know yeah. straight up it it tilts in on either side uh, as you get toward the top and that's the tumble home it helps um, with stability and keeps the water out and all kinds of uh, fun stuff like that well it, a couple of different people are pointing out that he he may need to be in this position to be lower down on the deck and farther out right so that he actually can with the line yeah, he has exactly that's why the main thing. chains they actually come out mm. you know further on the tumble home so that would be the you know that would be the place where I would be, but maybe maybe the main chains are already filled up, right? That could be with, like, with all the people. Sorry, fishing. no room. Yeah, it could you know, be. You know, you're like we're at nothing anchor. better to do, right? Right, everyone go fish. Um, here we have an image of um, below decks, so we have a mess of um, of the uh, marines eating. Now this is we can see this is right where a hatch is at. Where see where the stairs are right beside them. So there's light coming down in this area. They're sitting on 
um, foot lockery kind of things there, sea chests. We can see you know, like ship, ships' cables, giant ropes, basically, uh, going uh, on. They're, they're going down a hatch uh, that goes down to, you know, lower than where they're at, and it, it snakes down through the thing. You can imagine uh, how crowded it is down here and uh, how it's not just super clear. So you're going to have things like, you know, ships' guns, cannons, on either side, further back. You're going to have giant cables doing different things, people's foot lockers. It's just not this, you know, ballroom down below, right? It's crowded with all sorts of things, people and equipment. Um, they are, who knows what they're eating. I mean, I think the supposition in the description uh, was... I think the artist actually says oh, that it's peas says, pudding. Oh, yeah, right there. Right? He uh, titled it says, four it marines eating peas on board the palace. So... They're eating peas. November 74. Delicious. Duh, John. Uh, read the <laughs> read what he wrote. Well, uh, the actual writing is a little faint at this. Uh, uh, this I mean, cool. it's it's actually quite legible, which is mm -hmm. really nice. Um, it it d does look, you know, I think if we had a ship like this today, it would be a lot more um, utilitarian but we can see you know the turned post and um That's and you can true. imagine the craftsmanship they, they, that went into they put some like lovely you know, and it's weird too because it. today i mean we would just stamp that stuff out right yep. it's like this is a big machine doesn't work and here it was all done by somebody by hand and so it's like no no we're gonna make this look good mm -hmm. um why, why why isn't life like that today anyway uh, here is uh, some people relaxing. Um, we have again a giant cable coming in from a from some sort of hatch or whatever. Um, the he's he's relaxing and he is got his arm on this iron. I don't know if it's possibly a pump handle. I don't. I'm not sure. Um, but it's a marine because of his hat. We can see his cue, his hair, uh, the clothing he's wearing. Even though he's a Marine, he's, he's not wearing breeches. He's got a checked shirt, he's got a waistcoat on. Uh, he doesn't, we don't see his coat, but he's got his normal uniform hat on. You see people in the background. Somebody's sewing. It's happening a lot on board ship because people are working on their clothes. Uh, they're wearing out all the time. And then we have somebody else who's just uh, sitting there on a uh, on a sea sea chest, and he's drinking something out of his mug. So I'm going to take a break here real quick, and we're going to have uh, Lauren jump in if she's got any uh, questions. Um, okay, so here's one. What is linseed? Uh, what is linseed? Linseed oil being the linseed. Linseed. So um, lin, is like uh, linen. So linseed oil is flax oil seed. Uh, flax seed oil. <laughs> Other way around. <laughs> right? Uh, so you, you extract the oil out of uh, flax seeds and you get linseed oil. Now, it, that's the basis under which uh, oil-based paints were done in the 18th century. It, uh, it does things with oxygen and turns into this kind of special paint kind of goo. I don't know how to explain it. but uh, I thought it was... It plasticizes and does weird stuff. Very, very strong stuff. Yeah. Um, I was running across a reference to it because I was looking at the, pro because of the wool live stream, I was thinking about a linen live stream and I was, and it came up while I was working through the linen process mm -hmm. that that linseed being a byproduct, they, you know, they had a lot of it and they yeah. used it for quite a bit of stuff. Yeah. Um, okay, so there is a super chat from Macaroni Gluer. What was the most common and safe form of lighting on ships? So, uh, uh, lighting on board ships is incredibly important because it's really, really dark. <laughs> but it is very scary, right? So, on board ship, you're not only, uh, it's all wood. Uh, we've got also sails that are, are uh, you know, just very flammable fabric and we have things like um, rope shavings which you saw when I 
was doing the fire here on the live stream, <laughs> and poof, uh, just burns like crazy. And you're using things like tar and uh, different oils. So basically a ship is a tinderbox. So lighting is very scary and difficult if you're using flames. So you would, you would have to be very, you know, uh, careful about anything that you use like candlelight, etc., all that kind of good stuff. So you'd have special lanterns. Um, it was very difficult for something like the powder magazine. So that's not up high. You don't have any really like windows in the side of a ship. You need to load powder in your powder magazine. So you're taking gunpowder out of barrels. You're putting it in little pouches so they can go up on deck and get shoved into the cannons. And how are you supposed to see what you're doing? So they would have these like uh, special lanterns and they would put them on the other side of a wall with a, with a window so that you could see kind of dimly what you're doing. Um, you, so everything had to be inside of a of a of a, uh, a lantern if you could if you were in any kind of dangerous situation at all where things are flammable. Um, I think sometimes they ended up working with just you know little candles, and I'm not sure how often. You know, I think at different times the regulations were different. Uh, you know, so it's like, no, you you just plain if you're below decks, it has to be in a lantern or else you know. Uh, you're you're risking the entire ship. So there are many times when um, ships just catch on fire and there are different things. I mean, even not just candles, but you've got uh, slow match for uh, um, firing off the cannons. You've got uh, fire for, you know, maybe you've got a problem with hay on board ship that's being stored and you can get spontaneous combustion. I mean, Woo, it is just uh, a scary place to be. So lighting, you're, a lot of times you're just using that light that comes from the grates. So you'd have grates over the top of those hatches sometimes, or the light that's coming down through the hatch. And as you go down layer through layer through the ship on different decks, you'd have almost no light whatsoever. So you were just groping around in the dark uh, because it, light was difficult and dangerous. Um, okay, there is a super chat from Lord Wellington 15 and no question. Just Thank a, you very just much. A donation. Thank you. There is a question from Sarah Cruz. Did fishermen have to wear a specific waterproof type shoe? You know, the, I think a lot of times you uh, see the term sea boots. Um, so that's kind of what they're wearing and they're just heavy leather boots. Uh, they didn't, uh, it's like sometimes they had kind of these weird, you know, slippery things, or I think a lot of things they would go barefoot because that's just, it's, you know, every shoe's going to wear out really rapidly if they get wet all the time. So it's very when difficult. You, yeah, in the onshore pictures, when mm -hmm. they're talking about people doing fishing and, and going to the, you know, oystering or whatever, right. a lot of times that's one of the rare instances you see people barefoot. Yep. Harder to, uh, on board ship, they seem to be doing their best not to get wet while they were doing exactly. their fishing. Um, okay, so there is a uh, super chat from Helmgrath, mm -hmm. hoping to see another naval series. Food, utensils, day in the life of journals, the naval ration videos were some of my favorite on the channel. Yeah, so um, I don't know when, we're, when I'm going to get to it. Uh, but on the Townsend's Journal channel, I want to have, I want to read through um, the the uh, the Seaman's Journal. Uh, oh, what's his yes, name? Samuel uh, Kelly. Yes, yes, Samuel Kelly. Um, I think that's right. Um, that's what I hope to do after, like, I get through with. Uh, Cress, well, I can't remember which where bark covered house. But we'll be, yeah, well, those bark covered house, and the, I'll be hopefully <laughs> uh, kind of doing some read throughs on uh, Samuel Kelly, uh, which will be some some good uh, um, again uh, sailor life kind of thing. There are, are not very many choices. There's Spivey's piece. Um, there's the Kelly one. Um, there are not very many uh, where we get kind of a uh, life of a common uh, sailor. Uh, in our 18th and 19th century context, obviously something like two years before the mast if you're looking for a good read for early 19th century. So good stuff there. Okay. Do, 
do you want to show your book, the, the book you have there? I do have, so one of the things I, I enjoy, um, uh, the Anatomy of, of a Ship series. Uh, this is for the 20-gun ship uh, Blandford. This is a lot of, these are made uh, many times for modelers, uh, but it goes through the ships and it shows you all the different, oops, knock over my, uh, shows you all the different, like, okay, this this part of a ship would be done by these, you know, different sizes of, of uh, timbers and, how, you know, how it would be made, what the sailors uh, sails are like and the guns are like and uh, kind of really, really breaks down uh, a ship into its individual tiny little pieces. Uh, so really neat series. Um, and I've got uh, several of those for different size ships. Um, if you're interested in, you know, what what does it look like? Now we had what's is what's the guy's name? Stephen Beastie's cross sections. I was going right. to put a link in for that one. Right. Uh, I couldn't. We couldn't find uh, our copy of his cross section of a 18th century man of war, but uh, fun fun uh, book for that sort of thing too. A little bit more, this is kind of oriented toward uh, detail, strange people like me. And then the Beastie series really meant for um, kind of kids. And right, I just, really good. we really loved it as yeah. kids and it's the first thing that came to mind when, as a book when we were yeah. thinking about the, yeah. yep. Yeah, right? I, I, so, Ivy liked it, Lauren liked it, Sydney liked it, so. Um, I like it too. I, I have another super chat here, this is from Jessica Gasparini. Late, but so glad I made it. I'd rather be swabbing decks than shampooing carpets like I am today. <laughs> Love y'all. Well, <laughs> we'll give you a break for a while. Don't worry, you can get back to it. They're going to be there. Yep, yep that uh, carpet's not going anywhere. Hour, hour from now, they're still going to be there waiting to be shampooed. So, eh, what's the difference, right? <laughs> Are we good? Are we ready to jump back yes, in? Yes, we're all kind of. Okay, yeah, E. Maisie says, uh, Towns Journal Channel, I had no idea. Yeah, you can, it's my, it's my hidden secret channel. It's not that secret. I, I put a link in for it. <laughs> I, I, also, I'm yes. sorry, I forgot this. This is a member chat from Speed and Style. Tony, what is with the wrapped ponytails? And there's a picture coming up. We'll, we'll see a little more context for that. Yeah, the we'll see. Let's jump in. Let's jump in. Boop. There we go. Uh, so you can see his ponytail here. Um, so it's a cue. It's um, a, the way people, I mean, this is, we, it's hard for us to kind of grip our head around how many times hairstyles have gone whoop, whoop, all over the place, right? And men in our 18th century context, and especially here in the mid-century, wigs are really common or hair that looks like it's a wig. Why vagaries of human fashion, right? Um, but this is, I mean, it's like people are judged by how long their ponytail is in the 18th century, okay? <laughs> and you, it's like... It's a very well, important It's metric. super long, right? So I viewed you really popular in that time period. <laughs> um, uh, here we have people relaxing in this lower deck setting. Um, we've got sailors. We've got the marine here relaxing. I don't know if I would let anybody relax that much on board shop. Um, again, we can see this iron bar that's sticking out obviously that see that image we saw earlier let's see that one it's probably the see the iron bar that he's got his arm resting on it's probably the same one uh here but it's a, a kind of a different direction this that he's laying on that's a grating probably that goes directly down so he's underneath the sun is coming through a hatch right above him and there's a hatch right below him and he is, he's laying on the grating, probably blocking the light so someone down below can't see. Yes, yeah, thanks. <laughs> oh, get off the... <laughs> um, and we've got sailors in the background here. Um, there's a sea chest that one is sitting on. It says CDN 17, something like that. Or he's got a mug there. We can see how he's dressed. No, notice they're sort of uniform. Now, sailors in this time period, they might be supplied out of the slops chest uh, so that their their items all look the same, i.e. uniform, but there is no specific sailor uniform necessarily for the Navy. There is for the Marines. They have to wear 
then it's like, you, there's your coat's going to look like this, your hat's going to look like that. Uh, sailors don't get uniform until later on in the 19th century. Uh, but here in this time period, it's a little bit catch as catch can. And, but they might want to all look alike, or they might all be supplied out of the slops chest, so i.e. They're, they're working from the same fabric and the same cut. <clears throat> Do you want to flip back to you? Flip okay. Yep. Okay, so there was a question from mm -hmm. Eric F. And he was wondering if we knew of any basis for the eye patch being used to keep your eye, one eye adjusted to the dark, right? So there's, mm. have you heard that theory mm. about pirates? Mm. Okay, mm. so it's that they wear one eye patch so that they, when they go below decks, they'd, you know, take the eye patch off and they'd be able mm. to see out of at least one eye. Mm. Ever run across any? No, nope. I have not heard that one before. I, I, I've heard the theory, but I, I in, in all the stuff I've read, I've never run across anything to support it. But that doesn't mean it's not true. It's just we haven't run across it. Yeah, I mean, if you've ever, I mean, and we all have, either come out of a dark place into yeah. the daylight or, you know, vice versa. Mm -hmm. And it takes, I don't know how long for our vision. But I've to, never tried right. with an eye patch to yeah. see if it would what work. Right? To see if you would keep your... Well, it's time for a test. Time to, time to actually put this into action and see if it works. <laughs> Sometimes I, mean, I feel I like, think you know. that if you had an eye patch over one eye, it would just make you more light sensitive. Because I, I'm if, not sure. Because if you cover one eye, your other pupil dilates. But would it react, this, like, would it help react quicker? But Allie Burden says that Mythbuster tested it, uh, she, she thinks. So maybe... Maybe, maybe somebody can chime Maybe in they've on. already test this, tested the science and found out if it works. <laughs> There's our Max R. Cruel. Uh, cool. Uh, Avast. Yes. Okay. R. Um, we have in this image, uh, we can see that the, the, the deck height is not high. No one is standing up straight in this image. If they are, they're bashing their head on one of those beams, right? Uh, it is not super high between decks, and some of them it's very low, under four feet or under five feet. So um, you know they're all, you know, very very short people. Or you're bending over a lot, um, and it's where you live, right? It's like it's like living in a closet where the the ceiling is 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 four feet high. Um, we have this ship's cable again coming up and around, kind of uh, probably brought up and high and stuck to the ceiling because they don't want to trip on it. Uh, and it's, it's going down, um, down the hatchway and then it's probably going out forward and through uh, a hawse hole or something out the front to hold or be ready to hold an anchor. And I don't know if there's anything else to talk about in this image. So, um, we have uh, this is an image of, did it say, did it say a midshipman? I believe, yes. Right. It, it specifically said that they're pretty sure it's a midshipman. Right, so a midshipman, so kind of like the, not really an officer, but. They're in but, training. Yes, an officer, officer in training, right? So sometimes as young as 12 years old, um, or maybe even younger at, you know, rarely at times. And we've got a ship's lantern. So probably the one at the very back of the ship. So he's probably, you know, at the very tail end of the ship here. I'm not sure about why the the uh, the rail here is undulating, curved in and out here, but it could be because of the the way the the rear of the ship and its um, um, sort of ornamental things going on. So a lot of times they have like gold carving, uh, but that would be just below his feet on the back end of the ship that we really can't quite see. It does say that he's on the taff rail. Right. So. Yeah, he's on the taff rail. We've got uh, a red ensign behind him that kind of says that they're probably part of the red squadron or whatever. Um, he's got his, this is mid 18th century, so he's he's wearing a, uh, a, a cocked hat. He's got his blue uniform, uh, you know, midshipmen are all going to wear the same kind of uniform because the officers do have sort of uniform, it's, it's slightly adjustable. 
Uh, especially if, you know, you're a higher officer. It's like, you want, do you want more gold lace? Go for it. Um, and, I, you know, he, maybe he's not great with faces because a lot of times we see backsides yeah, of people or people with their faces true. covered up or maybe something. He doesn't like it, maybe. Right. Or it now, just takes more time than most of the other things. Yeah, right. and depending on the discipline of a ship, um, doing something like sitting on the taffrail might be really verboten for, for some officers. Like, what are you doing? Right? This is yeah. not what a midshipman does. Right. Um, you're not, you know, you're going to be, you know, you're, if you're up here, you're not going to be looking goofy. But oddly, he's been here long enough for the artist to see him. Yeah. Maybe he's probably hasn't drawn him from life the whole time he was sitting there, but yeah. he was there long enough for him to... Know. Well, I'm thinking what happens is, is, you know, the captain's down in his ah, thing, yes. you know, he's up here and he's like, hey, you sit over there on the thing and, you know, do this pose and I'm going mm -hmm. to draw you. Um, um, did you make note of the lantern that we can see yeah. on the right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, rear ship's lantern, yep. And we could see ring bolts and, you know, holes for for uh, um, cable... Um, uh, anchor cables going out the back. We see small little ropes there, um, and there's like an iron stanchion or something there to support maybe a flagstaff or something that's going on there right by his hand. Um, yeah, let's hope he's not, you know, crying because he's he wants to be home or something like that. It's it says he's dozing. Oh yeah, he's dozing. It looks. I don't think it I just, doze there. I, I. It truly looks like he is going to fall backwards and off the ship. <laughs> uh, there we go. Um, here we go. Jay Corbett says uh, Red Ensign was indicating the ship was serving in the Caribbean. Here we go. Excellent. Um, We've got here uh, the cockpit, um, and this is where uh, either midshipmen or lower officers are uh, kind of living stationed. We see, you know, on the on the extreme right hand side, probably a hanging cot with a um, bag with personal things in it. We've got a mirror, so this is like normal kind of um, living quarters for this um, area now. We earlier had the question about lighting and lighting on board and, and whether or not they were going to use um, lanterns and whatnot. And my interpretation here is that there is a candle right behind that large mug, sometimes called a can in the 18th century. Um, and we can't see the, I mean, the artist wanted to use the light of the candle but not have to paint the candle. So right. We're going to place it right here. Just, yeah. But that means that we would have open flame. Now, there are three people there. They're not, they're not in a, the most dangerous part of the ship. So maybe that's, you know, at the time that this was going on, there, there wasn't necessarily a, a regulation against that. Maybe they have a little tiny lantern we can't see. It could be. <laughs> it could be. Uh, but my interpretation is they just have a small dip, yeah, a small probably. candle that's right there, and and uh, and they're being careful, or maybe they're breaking the rules. Right? Yes, or <laughs> much a very very. Although possible. it's not very likely, if this guy was the second lieutenant, that's true. Have that there, he should be enforcing that. Breaking the rules. He's like, oh yeah, I light that candle so I can get a good painting. It's like, hey, but that's <laughs> against the rules, and you're painting people breaking the rules. So I don't think that would be. Uh, what's going on? But um, ah, tremendous, tremendous artist. And again, we can see that that nice carving uh, post here in the in the shot, working at a table. It was crowded. These guys also don't notice they're reading and writing. Uh, they, if they're midshipmen specifically, they're always having to study. So mm. uh, in their off time, when they're not on duty, they're studying and they're doing lessons and they're working on their arithmetic because they have to know how to plot the ship's position and all these fun stuff. So it isn't just uh, all, you know, f fun and play. Um, it's mostly work, 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 and work some more. Yeah, I was thinking they were probably working on math. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> um, we have, is this the artist? Is this... Or is it just no, I don't there? think so. I think that this is, they're talking about a couple people that it could be, but it's uh, not referencing this as a self-portrait, so okay. no, I don't think so. 
Um, but we see the hair. So uh, this is somebody on uh, one side he's shaving and the other side he's you know, working on art and we can see the art supplies. We can also see you know, what the shaving was like and we see this person in undress. So most of the time people are going to be more dressed than this. So we see this sort of basically is like uh, just getting ready for bed or just got up. And we can even see as the artist, it looks like he needs a shave. Uh, over here we see him shaving and we can see the hair down basically. And that's a lot of hair. Yeah, it is. It, and it, it, then when you see all this hair, you're like, well, how do you keep all the hair clean? And then you're like, well, maybe that's explains why so many people just shaved their head and wore wigs because yeah. this looks like an awful lot of trouble on board ship or always up in that queue yeah and, and, and then you're so like you ah to i too if you're on a boat that's breezy yeah. and you're like wow. and you were we doing hard work salt in yes the air from right. The right and you're doing work with ropes and stuff i too up. would keep my hair you're as right. Right. tight you know as possible. Yeah, just safety reasons. And There's Speed Style Tony. He says, my dad wants to know what a ship's carpenter did day to day. Can you imagine if, you, so imagine you're, I mean, your ship is made out of wood and it's always rotting. You're always fixing things constantly. There's something to fix. And you're fixing uh, whether or not it's, you know, looking, working on the masts and the, and the yards. Um, you're working on the ship's boats, which are always going bad. You've got to paint stuff. You've got to fix just everything uh, needs to be fixed. And if you ever go into battle, you're, you're doing a lot of, <laughs> it's like, oh, a cannonball just hit that, and, you know, blue giant section. And so how they had enough uh, sort of lumber on board uh, is tough to know, um, you know, but, but you hear about, the, you know, them having to work on stuff. That is one of the most important petty officers uh, on board ship. That you know, your ship's carpenter, your gunner, uh, things like your bosun. That, you know, it's like some guys are. It's like I'm all about ship's rigging and ropes, and this person's all about keeping the wooden parts. You know, going. Whew, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. It's hard to believe. Hard to believe. Anyway. Um, we get to see the art supplies uh, that this person has. A little palette and watercolors. We've got a little wooden box with a sliding cover. We've got his, his uh, book for doing the, the uh, watercolors. And watercolors are very, very popular. All these are watercolors popular in our time period, probably because it's easy to travel with watercolors versus, you know, pick your, pick your medium, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're not going to take oil paints uh, on well, the ship. Well, I did not notice it the first time around, but one of the one of the pictures in this grouping is an oil painting. No, really? And he must have done it probably not while on board ship. It's the right. one where it's hove to and they're burning it off. Uh, and it it's very impressive. Yeah, he may have done a sketch and then... Yes, probably. And then did, did one later. Uh, here are uh, sailors and they are probably... Now, the, the speculation here is these getting something out of his eye, or not sailors, I'm sorry, Marines. Uh, again, we got, they're trousered, or even ship slops. We can see how the, the trousers, they, they don't really go down all the way, and they're not tight, they're, they're loose. Um, we, they've got their red coats and their special hats, and he's, uh, I'm not sure what he's sitting on there. Um, so, I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, but you see the ocean behind them and all that good stuff. We've got the purser, correct? Steward. Steward, well, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Steward of the palace. Weighing a piece of beef. So he's got a little, like, little mini scales. And this beef is not salt beef. It's fresh beef. So either they just killed a bullock or more likely they are close on shore uh, or right after they've been on shore because it's not salt beef. Because salt beef wouldn't look red. <laughs> it's more like mahogany or brown. Right. <laughs> and this looks like it's going to make a nice tasty, tasty meal. Yeah. I, right. I can't say that I've ever felt like salt beef. It, uh, salt pork sounds like it, yeah. it's tasty, yeah. but salt beef on the other hand. Yeah, and mm. it's not like corned beef where it's all soft. Yeah. It's more like board you know hard rock oak uh, yeah this is sort of like killick here yes um for 
you know, maybe he's... Well, and this, they were saying it, he may be um, getting ready. To, this may be for the officer's dinner, this fresh Yeah, leaf. Yeah, there you go. Um, there we go. And we've got a... Does it say Marine here in the foreground on this one? Uh, with the sailor see. in the background with the carrying oh, oh. the kegs? This was very interesting. They go into quite a bit of detail. They're like, we know that this is a military person. Mm. And it's been called a Marine. Like, this, he's been called right. a Marine. But there's a couple... And it goes into detail about why there. Mm -hmm. It says, the fur-edged hat that yeah. has a secret. Um, yeah. And top, the yeah. fact that his coat might have white facings mm. um, mean that he that he might be from some other yeah there's he's, some like exotic details and they right. are not sure where this is mm. um yeah so, he's got a short cutlass he's right got and they're talking about his the guns that are here and, and everything a seems a little yeah. unusual yeah he's all over the place yeah <clears throat> so uh, and the sailor has two pistols in his belt and yeah little maybe they're gunpowder cake boy that's crazy um uh, we've got on the other side we've got a uh, uh one of the ship's <clears throat> guns or cannon fire buckets drums kegs now you probably wouldn't want that keg that close there to the cannon because it would be in the way how are you supposed to get you know to it and you know get things done but uh, maybe even a swabs in the background. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. So, yeah, someone mentioned here uh, f uh, water buckets and sand buckets for fire extinguisher. And you can see the buckets uh, there. You're going to have lots of those sorts of things on board. Every gun is going to need uh, tubs and bus buckets for even just serving the gun. So you, you have to have water there to swap the gun out. You have to have uh, sand buckets to s distribute sand on the on the deck so that you can... You can uh, get grip when you're running around um, during a battle, or you need sand on board ship for your grinding of the decks and cleaning them. So you do have a lot of apparatus like that. And we've got a sailor, again, whether this happened all that often, depending on the discipline of a ship, leaning against a gun. Yes. <laughs> it could be <laughs> like, what are you doing? Uh, but you know, depending on, on the uh, on the ship and at the time. Uh, we've got him sort of relaxing. Uh, we can see the palace there on the, uh, on the uh, carriage of the gun. And we have um, the, the mast or maybe even the bowsprit coming out uh, in front here. And we've got somebody, does he have a spear? Yeah, he's got yes. a spear. Um, uh, sort of, he's fishing, spear fishing. They're thinking dolphin? he might be going after dolphin. Now, the question is, is it dolphin fish or a dolphin dolphin? Well, this specifically says dolphin. That's that's their... Yeah, there's two different... There's that's the dolphin, the mammal, and then there's the dolphin, I, I the fish. I think they're they're thinking and the actual dolphin. Okay, there we go. Okay, I have a couple different questions. Yeah. So, do you want to flip it Yeah, up? yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. I mean, okay, one of them. <laughs> is there a doctor on board this ship? Yes. I guarantee you there's a medical officers on board ship, doctors of some sort. He probably has, uh, especially on this size, he's probably got assistants, at least one assistant, and um, sort of, um, and then and then smaller assistants like Lob Lolly Boys or, you know, or somebody that's that's there to help. Um, so there's, there's always medical people. Now, they may be incompetent, probably more than likely, um, but they've got to have people to take care. You're in battle. People are going to get injured. People are going to get injured whether you're in battle or not, and somebody has to be able to take care of them on board ship. And then somebody else was wondering about flogging. They were wondering, did everyone get flogged in their career, or was it a rarity? And then, you know, did it just depend ship to ship? I think it depended a lot ship to ship. Now, there are standard seamen, um, you know, they can get flogged for standard kind of um, indiscretions or even sort of pseudo flogged or, you know, hit with sticks to make them do work. So they're doing that kind of thing all the time. And sometimes there, there were punishments for fairly low uh, sorts of in you know 
uh, things that maybe you couldn't help but do. So like the last person up is going to get flogged or whatever. It's like, well, somebody's got to be last, right? You can't all be first. Um, but normally th there were at different times regulations about how much somebody could get flogged before there was a real co court martial. So a captain might say, oh yeah, we're going to flog this guy, but he can really only flog him up to say 12 strokes. And then if it's anything worse than that, there's got to be more people that that bring judgment on that situation. And if you're not just a common sailor, then you might need a regular court-martial for anything else to happen. Say if you were the carpenter or a gunner or somebody else like that. You, those people you can't just flog at hand. You know, it's like, oh, he did something. Well, I, you know, we're going to flog him. Uh, nope, no, nope. he's higher up in the ranks th than that. So... You can't just do that whenever you want. But depending on the, the discipline of the ship, and it was up to the captain in so many of these situations, you know, um, some, some captains, it's like, yeah, we're flogging people left and right, and other ones, not very often at all. Okay. I think those were the ones I need to catch okay. up on. So. Let's see what we've got left here. we got this guy uh, leaning up against there. Amazing. Amazing image. Another one. Here we go. Um, um, a Marine with his musket. It even looks like he might have the bayonet on. Yep, yeah, because it's not in the scabbard. And he's got breeches on. He's not wearing uh, slops. So he's more like totally in uniform. <clears throat> Cockade and all that. Uh, ready to go. Looks like his gun's at half, half cock. It's probably he could just and fire it off right now. Gun loaded, ready to go. Um, and this, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to really kind of interpret the rail here and the... I know, that rail, to me, it looks very modern. What, yeah, the first time I noticed it, I'm like, that's mm -hmm. odd. That is not what I expected from their rail. There's no, there's no, um, like, netting here, no spot for it. Many times they would have their, their, um, their hammocks rolled up and in... A rail, in the railing right along there for protection. Um, we don't see that here, so I'm not sure exactly what part of the ship this is and, and how it's... Well, we do know that the artist has taken artistic liberties with yeah, cleaning up a shot. Yeah, uh, so to, uh, he may it's like, okay, we're, I'm not going to do this. So we do have a little ship in the in the background, maybe a cutter Cutter or something. is on the horizon to right, the left. Right. Yep. So yeah, maybe he cleaned this up and it's like, oh, let's make this easier and less busy because he's concentrating on the person right. here and, and mm -hmm. not the surroundings necessarily. But again, you can't see his face. Now, this <laughs> is... Okay, this is the... Um, it's the British Brig Expedition that's aground, mm. and it's a salvage uh, in progress on the right. western point of uh, Santa Cruz de Tenerife. Okay. Uh, Tenerife. And boats are in attendance, and the men on deck are recovering cargo from mm. the hold with tackle rigged to the mainstay. And go. the upper masts and yards have already been removed. So right. they're doing their best to get as much off the ship as they can. So this is a brig. That's two masted. Um, and, <clears throat> and this one, it's, as so often, uh, I think it's hard for us to kind of even imagine how often they're losing ships. And may maybe we'll you know kind of talk about that sometime in the future. But ships are... It, they're in a precarious spot. They they don't have uh, really good ways of knowing exactly how things are charted in particular areas. They can get caught off guard by the winds blowing in the wrong direction or whatever. So there are many situations where they are losing ships to the weather, to their location, to um, mishandling, or maybe they're, they're, they don't know their location because they haven't had a good sighting for a long time and they're being driven by the winds and all of a sudden, whoop, lee shore and, oh, the ship is wrecked. And here they're having to salvage it. So they, it's probably too, too far in for them to refloat this, to bring it off. Maybe it's pounded against rocks and broke the bottom of the ship through. So they're just having to salvage what they can. So interestingly, Speed and Style Tony says that Tenerife is famous for crashes, both oh. ship and aircraft. There we go. Yeah. There we go. So dangerous spot. Dangerous spot. Um, 
And there is uh, Mr. Jay Willis. Thank you very much. Um, let's see, what do we got here? And here we have one of the ship's boats. Amazingly wonderful picture. Now we, we do I have a book around here, it's in the other room, uh, that's all about ship's boats from the 18th century. So uh, they, they many times they did drawings of the boats as they would get procured and they would say, this is the, the shape of the boat. We get to see, even in this top-down view, the artist has done a tremendous job of showing us sort of the, uh, the wine glass shape of the stern. And then we can see how it's you know, constructed in the middle portion and then in the bow portion. We get to see with someone standing up just how big it is. That thing is probably about eight feet in the beam. We can see where the mast step is in the front and where the thwarts are going across uh, and then how the, how the rear uh, stern is constructed, just tremendous. Now this is a small boat. Notice there's only, uh, there's spots for just um, like four oars, two on, uh, two on either side that we can see kind of the ports that go through that. So it's you know, like the captain's jolly boat or something like that. Does it say? In the Let's see. No, it, it no. gives some details, but not about which particular boat this there is. There we go. Uh, and what standard sailor dress was like. They're in trousers. They're, you know, one's got a, a, a tricorn hat, and the other one has something like a monmouth or just a round hat. Got a bucket, probably painting uh, the inside of the boat. It, again, with the what, do, what are people doing? You're always painting, always repairing. Uh, there we go. This is the... the uh... Yes, this is the oil. All right. Mm -hmm. So they've got the, the ship and they've, they've pushed it, pulled it down. So they've taken tackles uh, and hooked it to the masts and they're, they pulled the ship over so that they can work on the bottom side of it. And if you don't have a dry dock, this is what you have to do to work on the bottom side of the ship. And it, it needs to be repaired all the time. You've got worms that are eating up mm -hmm. these ships. Now this is probably, if it's 1770s or earlier, this is before they've done a lot of the coppering on the bottom of the ship. Uh, so you have to, all the more that you have to do more work on it. You tar the bottom sides of it. You have to get at it and uh, replace uh, different um, piece of the sheathing of it so that, that um, you know, things are wearing out and getting rotten. And, I mean, can you imagine having a hole in the bottom of your ship? Right. And, right. And, and no, even even the story of the palace, this particular mm -hmm. one, yep. um, it, in the, was it 1782? Yeah, in the 80s, yeah. Right. So, like, 1782, uh, it was in the Caribbean, and at one point, it's like, ooh, this is leaking really, really mm -hmm. badly. Uh, and they, they, they ran it aground and then found that it was just too rotten. There was nothing they could do. And so 12 days later, they burnt it uh, because there was just, there was no way of recovering this. Now, normally you would try, you know, you would survey these ships at different points and say, okay, th this, you know, you, we can't sail this anymore. We have to take it in to be repaired or broken up. Uh, and you, you hope to not have that happen while you're on duty. It's like, no, oh, we have to, you know, give up on our ship, basically. Uh, but here it's being repaired. They probably have these torches and tar they're heating. Uh, that's where all these flames and stuff are going on. Uh, so they can uh, re-coat the bottom of it to tear off all the barnacles and uh, repair that and all that good stuff. Ooh. Ooh. Um, are they recovering an anchor? Yes. So yes. this is... It, probably in the harbor off Santa Cruz to Tenerife. Okay. And the men are using a launch mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're pulling in the anchor. Right. So, yeah, so the launch they're doing is, hard work. You yeah, tell. the launch is one of the larger of the ship's boats. We can see there's a lot of guys on board. And they are, you know, trying to get the anchor. So sometimes they would, and you could see they've got all kinds of pulleys here. It's like they've got to raise up this, like, 5,000-pound anchor or something, you know. Uh, and they have to use multiple pieces of tackle here to pull this up. Now they... they 
they're, they're probably once they get it off the ground, they can take that line over to the ship and and then use the capstan to pull it up. But um, sometimes they would run the anchors out on a launch like this, but it'd be very difficult and dangerous to have this very, very heavy anchor in a, in a smaller boat like that. And how do you get it off the boat without you know, sinking the boat, <laughs> all that kind of good stuff. Um, but they had ways to do everything. They were ingenious in, in doing what they had to do. When, when you have to do something, well, you figure out how to do it. Um, and they're working at the anchor. And this is a two-decker out here. So is this a 74 or something that's um, in this image? Hold on. Yes, two-decker, at least 64 guns yep. with a cutter to the left. Yep. And it's probably off the coast of Kent. There we go. So um, there were many larger ships other than the Palace that was out there. Um, 60, 50s, two-deckers, 64s, 74s, and, and larger. Uh, even up to a first straight where you'd have 105 or 120 guns. Uh, much rarer, bigger ones like that. Uh, but the mainstay of a line of battle where you have, you know, true multiple giant ship engagements, you're going to have ships like this two-decker here that are fighting. And you might have up to 600 people on board uh, one, of these, one of these larger uh, men of war. And then this little cutter out here, which may be a ship's boat or, or just, you know, a smaller, uh, small unrated vessel, basically, uh, that the Navy uses for all sorts of uh, smaller work. Amazing. And there we are, back to the palace again. Woo! Well, there we go. We got some of the most interesting onboard images um, taking, you know, from life. They're rare indeed. From 18th century. Yes, so. and in the description section, there's a link to the spot where I put all the live stream, well, okay, most of the live stream uh, kind of notes about where the pictures are from. So if you need more details, you can mm -hmm. follow the links and, and, mm -hmm. and get mm -hmm. more more on all the pictures that we yeah, have today. Yeah, so good, so good. Um, any other questions or anything? Can you tell them about the new mug pictures? Oh, I yeah. mean, the new mug colors. New mugs. We do have a few. New mug colors that came in recently. Uh, what's this one called? Caribbean. Caribbean. Or Caribbean, depending on how you like to pronounce it. Uh, wonderful blue on black. And it's got the uh, cool nutmeg tavern boar uh, sign on the front of it. This guy must be about 14, 15, 16 ounces. You know, 14, you I think. 14, yeah, that's what I thought. And this one's one we've had before. What do you call that one? This one's Northern Lights. Northern Lights, It was one yeah. of my favorites, and right. it was one that was so requested. So it's dark out. blue down here. I don't know if you can tell. So dark blue and then kind of a heathery uh, blue up top, again, with the cool Nutmeg Tavern find. These guys are made in the United States. Um, just uh, so tremendous mugs. So a uh, wonderful way, if you'd like to support the channel, uh, you can find these on our website and Lauren dropped a link in the chat. So, um, tremendous. Do we have anything else we need to cover? I think we're all caught up. Uh, again, I wanted to uh, remind you of reenactorsschedule.org, right? find that and put it in, yes. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're interested in finding historical reenactment events around the country, um, just to, you know, check that out. Uh, great website and um, done by Frank. Frank does a great job of trying to get all those people that do events to sign up there so that everybody can find them maps and interesting information about exactly where the location is and what time it is and what you're going to find going on there. So make sure to check that out. Super thank you to Patreon and Townsend's Plus. I don't have the names this week, but I'll have them. Uh, next week, we're probably going to do... That's true. Okay. Next week, we're going to do Season 16 Marathon. I mean, we said we were going to do it last week. We said that's what we were going to do. Right. But, but this time, really. we're going to do it. Um, <laughs> now, did I explain last week that I made the mistake? And the, yes, okay. you did. Right. Mm -hmm. So I already explained that. So we're going to do that. We're going to... Gonna, I'm going to pick the right one this time. <laughs> I'm going to whip the time vortex into shape, and it's going to do it right instead of do it wrong. But we've got some other great live streams in 
the works, guys. Uh, we're going to have some fun with some future uh, live streams. Uh, but the marathon will be fun. We'll chat all through it like we always do and have fun with that. Some people ask, why don't you do this as a premiere instead of uh, live streams? I've got my reasons. <laughs> Let me tell you. Got my reasons. We're going to have fun with that. Uh, so it has been uh, great. Th a special thank you to all you Patreon folks that showed up for the... Hey, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was an accident. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, special thank you to uh, the Patreon folks that showed up for the pre- live stream show. Uh, we had fun with that. And uh, again, uh, thank you to all the folks that showed up at Kalamazoo. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Ivy. Mm -hmm. And thank you, everyone, Super Chat, and everyone for your tremendous support and kind words. It has been a wonderful time in live stream and the Nutmeg Tavern today. I hope you have a killer, wonderful weekend. I think the weather's going to be better, right? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. So thank you. I hope you have a great evening and thanks for watching.